Hitman rewards you for being stealthy and not killing innocent people. The more of a sneaky stepdad you are, the better your end of mission rating. I, however, prefer to use methods that are a little more on the nose. This is a problem because this new game mode released that I want to play. They give you several targets to kill who are all located on different maps. The catch is if you fail once on any of them, you can't play again for 12 real life hours and you have to start again. This makes attempting these contracts incredibly high pressure. Today I'll be trying the Deceits Challenge where I have to kill five different targets. Our first is the Pope who is currently visiting a small Italian coastal town. I choose to start at my agency's safe house and when I spawn in, Agent 47 is leaning against this railing, perving at those mannequins wearing lingerie. A kind of narcissistic as the mannequins look just like him. I wore a pair of cycling sunglasses and a stained wife beater to ensure I seamlessly blend in with the sophisticated Italian residents. I've got a silenced pistol, some grenades, and a robot called Little Flashy that is a flashbang grenade designed to look like a young child's toy. Merry Christmas, little Johnny, and then bam, the kid's retinas are seared and he has tinnitus for life. I make my way to the church, but it looks like they've closed it for security purposes. Every door has several guards on it, it's in a complete lockdown. I don't know if they're trying to keep the assassins out or the kids in. Fortunately, I know a sneaky way in, and so I head down to the sewers. There's loads of security down here as well, and so I pull little flashy out of my tank top and throw it over towards a guard. It doesn't detonate because I didn't realize I had to manually do it, and then the guard steals my robot toy. I'm certain the church has a lost property that he should return misplaced belongings to. Finders keepers is for devil sympathizers. I choke the big man out, steal his clothes, and then poorly hide the body. I then take my toy back. As I exit the sewer into the church grounds, I notice the body has already been found. Not ideal, so we need to work quickly before word spreads. I find the priest, and my boy is getting absolutely faded, giving the term higher power a new meaning. Man's telling the congregation to swap their bongs for Christian songs, and then is doing this out the back. I follow him to the basement, which has to be the most unwelcoming place I've ever been. Once we're alone, I throw little flashy at him and tactically blind us both. He tries to run, but it's to no avail, and just like that, I eliminate my target. Or so I thought. In my ignorance of thinking all priests look the same, I brutally murdered the wrong guy. Like the video if you've killed the wrong priest before in real life. Normally it wouldn't be a big deal, but because I broke one of the contract conditions, I fail. I now have to wait 12 hours to play again. It's actually a super fun game mechanic, because I can use this 12 hours to go and fuck myself. I'm determined to finish one of these contract sets. The next one we'll attempt is a three target set called the Ellipses. Our first target is Cody Haynes, who's an art thief attempting to rob a mansion in England. We also have to steal a priceless painting. I decided to start undercover as a gardener because Agent 47 loves them hoes. That's a lie, he's actually a virgin. A perfectly genetically modified virgin killing machine. Well, he doesn't kill virgins, but he'd be more likely to kill one than to deflower one. Anyway, I'm bringing in with me a tranquilizer gun, a lockpick, and some sedative pills. I make my way inside the staff quarters and find a bunch of employees moping around doing chores. One woman is just crying in the bathroom sink, and so I decide I'll cheer her up. I pick up the soap, proceed to loudly drop it, and then turn around and she doesn't even rail me. No sight of the target, and Agent 47 is still a virgin. I break into an office to try and gather some intel, but all I find is a golf club. On my way back outside, I notice that some of the staff have gone on break. This is the most English thing I've ever seen. Two people happily drinking cups of tea and one person with clinical depression. I take my golf club down to where a funeral is being held and I locate a man in a top hat. I clock him over the head, take his clothes, and then drag the body over to a container where he'll either be found later or will die from hemorrhage brain bleeding. I approach the mansion and I'm not even allowed inside. I have less access than when I was wearing the gardening uniform, we've literally gone backwards. I decide to just climb up the side of the building and sneak in through the world's messiest bedroom. No wonder all the cleaning staff are suicidal. I assault one of them in the bathroom, take his clothes, and now we've successfully infiltrated the venue. This seems like a warm place for children to grow up. I quite quickly find the painting, but there's a couple of staff members around here and one of them is looking right at me. I then realize it's my target, Cody Haynes. I wait for him to move and then steal the painting by waving my hands around a little bit. I spend quite a bit of time figuring out a plan as there's guards absolutely everywhere. For some reason, I decide my best way forward is to tranquilize Cody from a distance. God forbid I brought a real gun with me. I then have to bail because they're looking for the shooter and I get caught by some dodgy malacca who I then have to murder. His friends see everything, so I brutally throw a letter opener into his face. All these murders are not going to help staff morale, that's for sure. While waiting it out, I fail the mission because all the bodies weren't hidden. 
I was going to hide them, but I guess once they started body bagging the corpses, you fail. The point is, I got tripped up on a technicality and it's 12 hours before I can play again. At this point, I was wondering if I could even make a video from this, but then I drank a glass of water, called my mum and cried for 45 minutes and turned back on my Xbox to attempt the Janeira challenge. We'll be traveling to Colombia to assassinate Vicente Morello, a fascist military leader trying to take control of the country. No more meme loadouts. We're going with a guerrilla outfit, a chrome pistol, fragmentation grenades, and a briefcase with a sniper rifle in it. To show how serious I am about the mission, I walk into one of the locals' homes and put a bullet into his head. Unfortunately, this guy in the hat saw everything. I guess as well as being sun safe, he's also a narc, and so I'm forced to rather publicly execute him. I quickly flee the scene, but there's nothing to really worry about as we're in Colombia. This is just a Wednesday. I set off to find the general, but he's keeping quite a low profile. One of the local kingpins has a huge mansion, and I completely infiltrate and search it, but I don't find a thing, so I'll just show you this part. Imagine you're a game developer, and your job is sculpting the female booties. Like, they did a good job, it would have taken a lot of time. Does the manager come around and say, Good work on the asses, Gary, you're doing great. I return back to the town, and there's soldiers patrolling constantly with automatic weapons, so I need to avoid a shootout. I hear some sus sounds coming from one of the houses, and so I poke my head in, and one of the soldiers is just clapping for his friend. Just wholesome clapping, nothing sus going on here. Always good to be encouraging, I guess. This was my new strategy. I rapidly went door to door like I was a Girl Scout on amphetamine selling delicious cookies until finally I located General Morello. He's hiding in a house with a bunch of his boys. There's only two open windows with narrow gaps, and he never leaves the building. Fortunately, I brought fragmentation grenades, and so I slip one through the window and kill every single person inside. I then escape on a motorized canoe, and just like that, we've completed our first target. Two more to go. Next, we'll be going to an island in the Atlantic Ocean where there's a billionaire cult hosting a party in an old castle. Our target is art connoisseur Miranda Jameson. I'll be undercover as a guest, and I'm bringing a silenced assault rifle and ninja stars. I make my way inside, and it's crucial I don't blow my cover. Fortunately, Agent 47 is incredibly good at blending into his surroundings. I walk over to a table and pick up someone else's glass of wine while simultaneously allowing my briefcase to pass through the atoms of my body. A great party, guys. They're also selling luxury bunkers here and you can get a tour. Nothing like preparing for the end of the world to fill your soul with happiness and gratification. I proceed to steal all of the display apples as I usually do. I then pick up a kitchen knife and my tour guide freaks out. So when a woman picks up a kitchen knife, it's stir fry Friday, but when a bald cyborg looking malacca with a barcode on his head dips his toes into the culinary world, you start a castle wide manhunt. I have to escape down this secret tunnel and a staff member catches me. I throw the kitchen knife into her head, but this death is on the sexist tour guide. The castle has secret doors everywhere, and I find two guards in a room by themselves. This mission has no weird requirements that could cause me to fail, so I pull out my assault rifle and eliminate them both. I then hide the bodies, but they get stuck on a rock. I have to pull out my pistol and kind of desecrate the corpses to get them to fall into the ocean. If the bodies do ever get found, I'm thinking closed casket funerals. I feel as if weird rituals like this are actually something billionaires would do. I search the castle grounds for Miranda, and in the kitchen I make a strange discovery. There's a woman mopping the floor, so I decide to play a fun little Christian prank on her. I go over and turn on the sink, causing water to splash all over the place. She then puts down her mop and goes over to turn the sink off because you can't turn off a sink with one hand, you need to put the mop down. Now with a bigger mess on her hands, she forgets about the mop and pulls out a small cloth to try and dry up the liters of water that just overflowed. If I wasn't scared about the chef seeing and potentially failing and waiting 12 hours to play again, I would kill her. I keep exploring and find a funeral service that's being delayed. As this is a secret billionaire club, even the musicians have to wear blindfolds. I walk over and tell the harpist to start playing because the funeral is starting. She gets yelled at by someone and is all embarrassed, and then I throw one of the red apples I stole earlier at her head. I thought it would be amusing, but she falls backwards with such momentum that her spine inverts and she dies instantly. I figure it's best for a change of scenery, and so I take out one of the billionaire club members and dress in his robes. To me, this honestly just looks like a Harry Potter convention, but with more booze and less hot redheads called Ronald. At last, in one of the galleries, I locate Miranda. She's wearing a white fur jacket with red pants. I know nothing about fashion, but her outfit is objectively disgusting. A bunch of billionaires running around a castle dressed like wizards committing crimes of fashion. I begin devising a plan. You see, the big girl loves looking at this display cabinet that has nothing in it. There's a chandelier above the display cabinet, so it's pretty obvious what has to happen. I turn on a sink and lure the museum guy into an isolated bathroom. I then proceed to throw a ninja star into his head. I could have just knocked him out, but then I wouldn't have got to use my ninja star. 
I actually probably didn't even need the disguise, so a man died for no reason. At least Agent 47 is looking drippy with his pecan brown cravat. I patiently wait for Miranda to soak up the empty display cabinet and then I shoot the chandelier. Two targets down, one to go. I slip away while everyone's confused and escape via a speedboat. I just take off into the rough dark oceans, which I'm sure will go just fine as people never die at sea in small boats at night. Our last job takes us to a beachside mansion in New Zealand. Our target is a politician, Barbara Keating. I'm taking in a sniper rifle and a meaty bone. She has security everywhere, so I throw my meaty bone at one of the guards and knock him out. So an apple to the head kills, but a meaty bone doesn't. These are the things all good hitmen must know. I take his clothes and approach the property in my new disguise. I can see Barbara has a body double, so we'll need to figure out which is the real one. I make my way inside, and one of the guards is fixing his bike. They've employed so many guards, and they've even got a body double to try and prevent an assassination, and this dude is ensuring his gears are well-tuned. Thanks to him being a passionate cyclist, I'm able to slip into the premises. I head into the master bedroom, which again is quite filthy. I don't know if I trust Barbara to sort out the country if she can't sort out her white and dark laundry. I realize the real Barbara enjoys taking phone calls on the terrace, so I know exactly what I have to do. Assuming her body double doesn't also enjoy taking phone calls outside, we should be fine. I sat up in some long grass and pull out my sniper rifle. I proceed to put a bullet right between her eyes. I then do this half crouched awkward jog to safety, target down and mission complete. If you enjoyed this multi-contract style video, let me know because I had a lot of fun making this one. I love you and goodbye.